How's it going everyone? Welcome back to our next episode on how to program JavaScript. Now in this episode, I get to really confuse you guys because in all the previous lessons in this course here, we've been talking about a variable called var inside our lessons. And in this episode, I get to introduce two new types of variables called let and const, which are going to replace var in the future episodes on this channel because var has a sort of flaw inside of it that were fixed by let and const. And I will get to talk more about what exactly Exactly, they fixed inside the variable and why we're going to use it in the future in this course here on this channel here. So as you can see in front of me here, I do have a browser open and inside the browser, I just went ahead and opened up the console on whatever website I'm inside of in order to test out the JavaScript for this episode. Because if you followed my previous lessons, you'll know that we don't need to write JavaScript code inside a document for it to work. We can also do it directly into the browser and test things out. So that's what we're going to do in this episode. Now, before we get to talk about these two new types of variables, I do want to show you something when it comes to function scope and block scope which is something that is sort of tied together with the previous episode and also with the fact that the var variable has a flaw in it. So I do need to explain function and block scope before we can continue. So when we have a function scope, or let's actually go ahead and go back to the previous episode, we have something called a global and a local scope. A global scope is when we just go into the root of the file we're inside of, like here. This could be the same thing as a file inside my text editor. If I were to just create a variable here called a set equal to 10, then I'm creating a variable in the global scope of my document. So I can just go ahead and save this. And now we have a variable a inside this page here. Now, if I were to create a function and call it something like example, and then go ahead and create these curly brackets. Whatever goes in between the curly brackets is going to be inside the function's scope, which is the local scope of this function here. So we're to create variable B, set equal to 20, then this specific variable can only be accessed from inside the function. If I were to go down here at the bottom outside the function and say I wanted to console.log the variable called B, it's going to give me a reference error because B is not defined because it's inside the local scope of the function. So we can't go in there and reach it from outside the function. But we can, if we wanted to, do to A, as you can see, we get 10 because it's inside the global scope of the function or in, not of the function, but of the page that we're inside of. So that's a small recap from the previous episode. Now at the beginning of this episode, I talked about something called function scope and block scope inside JavaScript. And we need to understand these before we move on to the variable types that I want to talk about in this episode. Now I just created a function here called example, and we just talked about the global and the local scope. Now a function scope is essentially the scope that goes in between the curly brackets. So it's a local scope of that specific function. So if we were to take the function that I have up here, you can see we have the function, then the name of the function, and then we have these curly brackets here, which is actually what defines the scope of this specific function. So curly brackets is sort of the keyword here. We can, if you want to, create a standalone scope that doesn't really have a name or anything attached to it by simply creating a pair of curly brackets. And then I can go inside of it and create something like a, I can define or declare a variable called a. And then we actually have a undefined declaration of variable a inside a simple block scope that doesn't have anything attached to it. So when it comes to these scopes, we can create a scope either by creating a function scope like the one I have up here, or we can create a block scope. Now, typically we see block scopes tied together with something like if statements, you know, conditional statements, which we talked about previously. So if I were to go down here and create something like an if statement, if parentheses, curly brackets, and then some, oh yeah, <laughs> I forgot you couldn't click enter inside the console of the browser when you want to go to the next line. So let's go back one more step to the if statement because I didn't finish it yet. Um, inside the if statement, we can write something like is one equal to one. Then go ahead and run the code in between the curly brackets. So the curly brackets here again is going to be the scope of this specific statement. So we created a block scope here 
inside an if statement. And again, you should already know how to create an if statement, but we haven't really talked about what the curly brackets mean when it comes to if statements and other statements and that sort of thing. So um, inside the curly brackets is going to be the block scope of this specific if statement. We can do the same thing if we were to go ahead and say we have an else statement after the if statement, then whatever goes in between the curly brackets is going to be the block scope of this specific else statement here. The same thing goes for loops. And I know we haven't talked about loops yet, but when it comes to JavaScript, we can create loops inside uh, JavaScript that keeps spitting out information by looping through data. We do actually create block scopes inside loops as well by creating the curly brackets. And again, we will get to loops at some point, but just not for now. Now, the point I'm trying to get across is that we have something called the function scope, which is tied to functions and whatever goes in between the curly brackets is part of that scope of the function. And when it comes to any other sort of conditional statements or loops and that sort of thing, then the curly brackets is what we call a block scope. Now, the reason this is important is because when it comes to function scopes, which I showed you previously, if I were to create a variable inside a function like B that I have right here, and I want to access this variable, I can only do so from inside the function. Now, when it comes to a block level scope, it works a little bit different because if we were to create an if statement, let's actually go ahead and clear out the console here. If we were to create an if statement and I were to say something like one is equal to one, which is always going to be true, then I want to create a variable called va a is equal to 10. Now, if we were to go outside the if statement and I wanted to console log this specific statement here, or variable A inside the statement, then you can see we get 10, which doesn't make sense because when it comes to function level scopes, we can't access a variable from inside the function. So why can we do that when it comes to a block level scope like an if statement, else statement, a loop, and that sort of thing? Why is it possible to do it with one, but not the other? And the same thing goes the other way around. Now, again, just to explain this, because I know a lot of people won't really get why this is such an issue. When we create a function and we have the curly brackets and we create a variable inside the function, then we can only access the variable from inside the function. If I create a block scope, like an if statement, and I do the exact same thing as inside a function, I create a variable inside the if statement, then for some reason we can access the variable from outside the if statement. And this sort of goes against the rule when it comes to a function scope because we shouldn't be able to access a variable from inside a block scope either when it comes to you know creating variables and that sort of thing. And this sort of messes up our code or at least puts us at risk when it comes to messing up our code in the future. So it's very important that when I create a variable inside a conditional statement or a loop or something which has a block scope that we can't access the variable from outside the block scope. Now, the reason that it's not the same when it comes to function scopes and block scopes is because we have something called hoisting inside JavaScript. And hoisting basically means that when we run the code inside the browser and we parse it, then it's going to read all the JavaScript code and all the declarations are going to be taken out of the code and put at the top of the document. Now, I'm not going to talk more about hoisting in this episode because it's only going to confuse newer people who's never heard about it before. So in the future, we'll have an episode going more into detail about hoisting in that episode. For now, just understand that we have a function scope, a block scope, and variables don't behave the same in both of them. And we want them to. They need to behave the same. Otherwise, we put our code at risk in the future when we want to declare new variables and that sort of thing. So what I want to do now is I want to show you how let and can't fixes the flaw inside the var variable by giving you an example here. So after clearing the console, the next thing I want to do is I want to create the same example, but instead of using var as a variable inside the if statement, I want to create a let variable. And by the way, if you don't know how to clear the console, you can do so by clicking this icon up here or clicking control L if you're on Windows at least. So inside here, I'm going to create a second if statement, curly brackets. Then inside the condition, I'm just going to write one is equal to one, which is always going to be true. And inside the block scope, I'm going to create a let variable called B and set it equal to 10. Then afterwards, I'm going to go down to next line and I'm going to write console dot log. And then I'm going to try to log out variable or let B. 
And as you can see, we get B is not defined because B is declared inside the block scope the if statement, which means that we can't access it from outside the block scope of the if statement. So now I'll show you a couple of examples of what exactly the differences are between let and var. And if you didn't quite get the differences, then either watch the video again or just forget about it for now and just know that var has a flaw in it that we want fixed as a developer and let is going to be the replacement of var because it fixes that flaw. And I should probably mention that the reason that it didn't just change the var variable so it behaved the same way as let is because right now on the internet, we have millions of websites that's already online that has been built using the rules that the var variable has with it. So if we were to just change something that exists on current websites, then we might have millions of websites that suddenly get error messages inside of them. So instead, they just decided to create a new variable called let and const to use instead of va in the future. So let is going to be what we use in these episodes here in the future when we create any sort of projects or anything. So that's how it's going to be. Now we also have a new variable type called const and some might argue that it's not really a variable, it's more of a constant because of the way that it behaves and because of the name of it. So what I want to do is I want to give a short example of what exactly const does different than let because let and const are pretty much the same, they behave the same way, they fix the same flaw that JavaScript, or at least the var variable inside JavaScript had. And the only difference is that a const variable type cannot be changed later on. So if I were to declare a const called something like example, and do notice that when I create a const variable, the name of the variable is going to be all caps, because that is a way you need to do const variables. So afterwards, I'm going to set it equal to 10. There we go. And after declaring it, if I were to just go ahead and console log it, we can actually try that first. Console.log example. Then you can see we get 10, which is what we should get. But if I were to try and change it, so we would say we have the example constant here and I were to change it into something like 20 or 120 because I made a mistake here, click enter. Then you can see we get a uncaught type error, assignment to constant variable at blah, 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 which basically means that we can't change the constant into something else because it is a constant. Okay, so besides my weird way of trying to explain what exactly a const and a let variable is and what a function scope is and a block scope, I hope that you sort of understood what I was trying to get across in this episode. If you didn't, then I will go and link the lesson files on my Patreon in the description of this video if you want to have a much better explanation of what exactly I was trying to explain in this episode here. Again, I'm not trying to force you into my Patreon by making a bad video lesson and then saying that if you want a better version, then go into my Patreon. I'm just trying to say that sometimes when I write things down, it becomes much better than when I try to speak it because English is not my native language. So if you want to have a another version of this video that is better explained, then my Patreon will have that specific file linked in the description if you want to have it. So I hope you enjoyed and I hope to see you in the next episode.